what are you excited about these days? I mean, other than other than role chains, obviously, like what uh, kind of tickles your interest in the cosmos space and and beyond, of course. Yeah, you know, I think that what I am excited about is this growth in mod in this modularity narrative, and I think that this has always been the design philosophy that Cosmos has preached. You know, the Unix design philosophy is simple, single-use components that expose an easy-to-use API and can be endlessly remixed and composed together to form higher-level systems. And I think that in the original software, ABCI sort of embodies this as far as a, an interface that allows for new things. And what we've seen is folks breaking apart the stack in new and novel ways with data availability and shared sequencing and things like that and um, building these modular tools. And, you know, part of that for me, who's been building modules in the Cosmos SDK and thinking about blockchains from a modular perspective for a very long time, it's exciting to see interest around this. And I think when you think about the two major paths to scale, one is vertical scalability, which is sort of embodied by uh, Solana, and one is horizontal scalability, which is embodied by Cosmos, you know, more and more folks jumping into that world, I think is really exciting. And role chains, the, the initial product that we're working with is sort of an effort to offer a different set of trade-offs in the modular ecosystem. One where you still have a validator set, you have that ability to decentralize and potentially scale out to a full POS set, different sorts of POA, different forms of security, whether it's adding Celestia to existing chains or using Celestia to add additional security to POA chains, using things like ethos and restaked ETH. Um, I think that there's a lot of options there and with role chains, we wanted to add another option to that. And I think the other thing that we're trying to do with role chains is make it as easy as possible for folks who are coming into the ecosystem to be able to launch a new chain, whether it's on Rollkit or shared security with the hub or Celestia or one of the many excellent options. But I think right now there's no easy way for be beginners to approach the stack. There's, you know, you look, there's many different forks of the SDK, there's forks of Tendermint, it's very confusing when folks want to come in and try to build. And if you want to integrate all of the latest features, you end up spending a lot of time learning about Go dependency hell and um, <laughs> how where all these different repos are, and there's a ton of them. So we're trying to make that as easy as possible for developers and help build a way to sell services and software through that stack. And that's kind of what we're working on with Roll Chains. Yeah, I want to unpack that, but I just want to say like this Linux analogy, I think is really on point. And you know, I, I use this analogy a yeah. lot to describe um, how uh, Cosmos like is uh, is building this stack that enables modularity and um, that, you know, but but I think I think for people that look at Cosmos from the outside, like there's there's a few things that are confusing. One is the de this this kind of dependency on the Cosmos Hub, or at least this perceived dis dependency on the Cosmos Hub. Which you know, for people inside Cosmos, I think we understand that that's not the case. But for people outside of Cosmos, I think they they associate Cosmos with the Hub, and that somehow like the Hub manages all of this, or is somehow like orchestrating all the Cosmos chains. And then the other thing is. The, the app chain thesis that Cosmos pushed like pretty aggressively for uh, for a long time that was kind of a precursor to to, to modularity and was necessary in, in order to achieve modularity. But I think people still associate Cosmos to, to sort of, you know, these highly vertically integrated app chains with a validator set and like the Cosmos SDK and perhaps Cosmosm and like IBC. And so breaking apart those misconceptions outside of the space, right? When talking with, you know, typically when we talk to investors or when we talk to people in Ethereum that are not familiar with Cosmos is a challenge. How do you, how do you uh, navigate that when speaking with people outside the space that might say like, oh yeah, well, Adam's not doing very well. So then like, you know, Adam hasn't pumped recently. So yeah. maybe like Cosmos is not doing very well. Yeah. You know, it's, I think that now with the launch of Celestia and DYTX and many of the other exciting projects coming this year, also with the rise in say and injective within the ecosystem, I think it's now much more of a multipolar ecosystem than in the past. And the Cosmos thesis has never been about the Cosmos hub as a 
single instantiation of this idea, and that was going to be the end of history. It, it's always been about this world in which there's hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not millions of chains. And I think, you know, we saw Peng talk about millions of chains back in 2019. <laughs> so, like, this idea has been around, like, I, I see Nick White talking about millions of roll-ups, and I tend to agree. You know, I think that there's going to be many of these verified state machines that have all kinds of different properties and the key there is the interoperability. And I think, you know, there's an increasing realization throughout the crypto ecosystem broadly that IBC has effectively solved this bridging problem. And that there's, you know, the a lot of the things that people would knock about the protocol, like the call and response nature or some of the p things that people think are overly complex has actually led to something that is very strong and extensible and able to provide first-class user experiences and cross-chain composability in a way that other protocols have just been unable to bring. And, and, you know, we see this over and over again. And, you know, I think that when I think about the Cosmos, I think about the broader IBC ecosystem. And in that broader IBC ecosystem, there's many things that have pumped, that are pumping. There's active communities there. And there's a lot of excitement, especially from the builder community. And, you know, that that is what has me excited.